This is the small but not insignificant reddish-brown X-planet with the funny orbit that resides far out in our solar system, and it's getting a visitor. This is the Maryland home of the New Horizons mission. The spacecraft has been en route to Pluto for nearly a decade and now the stage is set for its arrival and typically the press gets to turn up for the best bit. It's one of the most highly anticipated space ventures ever attempted. We've become rather used to incredible images of our planetary neighbours as we've gotten up close to every world in our solar system, but not poor old Pluto. Until recently, this was the best view we had. A striking but blurry series of images captured by NASA's Hubble Space Telescope. Some thought it was time to bring Pluto into focus. New Horizons was the answer, and so far it's made getting to Pluto look easy. Breaking the record for fastest ever launch speed, it's hurtled 5 billion kilometres to the solar system's coldest, darkest frontiers, getting a gravity boost from Jupiter to shave years off the epic voyage. It's hugely energy efficient, operating on less power than a pair of 100 watt light bulbs. What are you going to do for the 10 years till it gets there? Vacation in Spain. So, how was Spain, Alan? <laughs> Spain was just great. He's at least 3,462 days older, but principal investigator Alan Stern is a patient man. No mission's ever travelled so far, uh, or I believe uh, so long, to reach its primary target. We're very proud to be completing the initial phase of reconnaissance to the solar system. Although we're last, the fact that we're completing this journey that was begun 50 years ago by our parents' generation is, is very special. Just one problem. Months into the journey to the ninth planet in our solar system, we found out there was no longer a ninth planet in our solar system. It had all started so well. In 1930, a young researcher, Clyde Tombaugh, working at the Lowell Observatory in Flagstaff, Arizona, spotted a new world. By comparing two of the images captured by the telescope, he spotted that one of the heavenly bodies was on the move. I uh, saw, I looked in there and I spied it almost immediately. Then uh, I went down and notified the other members of the staff. What did they think about it? Well, they were electrified. And they weren't alone. The exciting news went around the world. Astronomers too rushed to send their congratulations. These are the actual minutes of the ordinary meeting of the Royal Astronomical Society on that day. So you've got here the President announced that a telegram had been received from the Lowell Observatory of an extra Neptunian planet. And then it says, a discussion on the discovery followed. It's quite succinct yes, it for such a momentous <laughs> yeah. event. A few months on, the discovery had a name, and soon it was firmly part of the Planetary Club. We call something that goes round the sun a planet. All the planets, there are nine of them all together. Pluto? The ninth planet. But Pluto was starting to give astronomers a bit of a headache. It wasn't playing by the solar system rules. For a start, Pluto's puny, so small it could fit into America. It doesn't even orbit on the same plane as the other planets. And then there's the largest of its five moons, Charon which is not much smaller in size and locked face to face in an orbital dance with Pluto. But a spate of more recent discoveries really put Pluto in its place. With bigger and better telescopes, we're discovering other things beyond Pluto, beyond Neptune. Um, there's probably 100,000 objects bigger than 100 kilometres. So at a very practical level, if you keep Pluto in the list of planets, then you also have to have Eris and Sedna and Maui Maui and Howie blah, 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 
and the poor school kids are learning another dozen every year. It's crazy. The Pluto problem finally came to a head at a meeting of the International Astronomical Union in 2006. They were determined to finally bring some definition to the issue. It was bound to be controversial. Jocelyn Bell Burnell had to present the results of the ballot. Things change. We begin to see that the old definition ain't good enough and we revise it. So that, I think, is a really good example of how science responds to new data, new information. I think when a, even a layperson uh, sees a picture of an object in space, whether it's on Star Trek or whether it's on the news, uh, they know if it's a comet or an asteroid uh, or if it's a planet or a star or something else. It's just surprising that the astronomers reacted uh, to the discovery that there are more planets in our solar system by saying, no, there aren't. We're not going to count those. Nevertheless, for nine years, books have been rewritten, posters redrawn, and orreries such as this one at the Jodrell Bank Discovery Centre made Pluto free. And so this one features our star, the Sun, in the centre, and then orbiting around it, we have the eight major planets. This is the eight planet generation. It's like planet Pluto never happened. And then the last of the major planets is Neptune. But as it turns out, the status of being a planet in our solar system is very last century. Instead, Pluto finds itself in the interesting position of being at the forefront of the next big thing in space exploration. All eyes are now trained on a patch of space once thought empty. But now we know Pluto shares its home with possibly hundreds of thousands of dwarf planets, comets and space rocks, debris from the turbulent birth of the solar system. It's called the Kuiper Belt. Material that didn't make it into becoming a planet or a moon was batted out here. Relics frozen in time for 4.6 billion years. In some ways it's, it's more exciting to me as a planetary scientist to go and see Pluto as uh, an example of the Kuiper Belt and the first object we see in the Kuiper Belt uh, than just the sort of stamp collecting exercise of ticking off one more planet. So it makes it far more interesting actually to go and see this, this leftover bit of planet formation. Our exploration there is only just beginning. New Horizons has already been sending us tantalising images as it's closed in on Pluto and Charon. The data that's coming down, even though it's only a small amount of the data that the spacecraft's taking, is so beautiful and Pluto's not disappointing. Pluto's spectacular. But these are nothing compared to the view it will get as it makes its high-speed flyby tomorrow. If we were flying over, for example, New York City, at the same altitude and looking down, you could peer into Manhattan and see not just Central Park, but the ponds in Central Park at this resolution. The first images should arrive on Wednesday, but it will take 16 months to get everything back, by which time New Horizons will be deep inside the Kuiper Belt. They're exploring an area of the solar system that hasn't been explored. I think it's brilliant. The most exciting thing will probably be the thing that no one is expecting. Yes, this is why we'll all be glued to our screens watching these images coming down. I can't wait to get into the data and really start making sense of it. Right now we're just standing under the waterfall and enjoying it.